This lecture is entitled Optic Disc Drusen 2 and it's the second of two lectures sharing my thoughts and clinical experiences of dealing with patients with optic disc drusen. The first lecture, Optic Disc Drusen 1, covered histopathology, pathogenesis, prevalence, associations and some of the more characteristic clinical features and we're now going to drill down a bit deeper in optic distrusion 2 and look at this in the context of the main differential diagnosis, investigations, most importantly the complications associated with optic distrusion and then some of my own thoughts really on practical management, what we can do to help people who have this condition. So for all of us, the principal differential diagnosis of optic disc drusen, a swollen disc, is papilledema, i.e. swollen discs in association with raised intracranial pressure. At this point, I'm going to say that it can be very difficult indeed to tell the difference between some types of optic disc drusen and early papilledema. And so my pearl is always, always involve senior clinicians and, if necessary, more than one. On the face of it, there are some good distinguishing features. If we look at symptoms, first of all, in the neurological history of raised intracranial pressure, patients may have characteristic headaches, early morning nausea, vomiting, transient obscurations of vision or diplopia. But of course, you can imagine that many of these things could also occur in drusen, for example, headache and, for example, transient visual obscurations. The science in papilledema, again, can be very difficult depending on what stage of papilledema you're looking at. None of us would miss an advanced stage four or later swollen optic disc in papilledema. But in the early stages, it can be very difficult to detect. The swollen optic discs of papilledema, however, do look different. The main reason is you've got swelling of the optic disc and the peripapillary retinal nerve fiber layer so that the edge of the disc takes on a blurred, white, grayish appearance. Characteristically, you get obscuration of the vessels as they cross the optic disc margin and loss of the peripapillary light reflexes. The discs are characteristically hyperemic and should have a normal optic disc pattern. All these points are in contradistinction to optic disc drusen. If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash op dot vision. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.